In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create this freezing clone trail effect inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's get into it. So before we jump into Adobe After Effects, we first just need to begin by getting some footage. So in order to capture the footage, we just want to put our camera or our phone onto a tripod. Then you just want to frame up the shot and press record. So with the cameras rolling, you just want to run into the frame and then complete the action. So the action should be you walking into the shot. You pretend you notice this clone or the screenshot hanging in the air and you jump up to catch that action. Of course, you can do this once, twice, three, four times. It's completely up to you. But once you've gone through that action, now what you need to do is get this footage into Adobe After Effects. So as you can see, we are inside of Adobe After Effects and I've got my footage all prepped up, ready to go. So this is me running into the frame. I look over and I do a jump. So this jump is what we are going to freeze frame. So around here, this is what we're going to freeze frame. And this is what we're going to have the whole sequence evolving around. So before we do anything, let's just go ahead and make a copy there. So we'll go command C, command V, and then we will just close this video over to this point, right click, go to time and select freeze frame. So we've created a freeze frame at this moment in time. Now we're just going to zoom all the way in. And let's create a mask around this person. So we'll go to the pen tool, select the freeze frame layer. And we're just going to draw a mask around this person. Now, it's really important here that you do a very clean job because you're going to be interacting with this mask in the video. If there's any rough imperfections or if there's any jagged edges, that's really going to become obvious when you jump into that clone. Now, of course, I'm kind of contradicting myself because I'm going to show you this in a rough technique. I'm not trying to make this perfect, but if you are doing this for your own project, then I would definitely recommend making this as perfect as you possibly can. Of course, though, this is just going to take me a moment to complete this action. So I'm just going to speed up the computer. I'm going to speed up this video and I'll see you on the other side once I have completed this. And there you go. You can see I've now successfully completed this. If I just solo this layer, you can see I've got this person frozen on its own individual layer. However, you can see there are definitely a few imperfections. So I'm just going to go into that mask and I'm just going to add a little bit of mask feather. So let's go for five. That should just give me a little bit of forgiveness there. And then I'm just going to unsolo that layer and I'm just going to drag this back to the very beginning and extend that over. So you can see they're now both the same length in time. So I've got this one layer there. You can see I walk in front of it and then jump into it. So when I jump into it, which is here, I'm just going to delete the video. And then as I jump in, that disappears. The problem is, though, at the moment I walk behind it, but technically it is behind me. So this means I'm going to have to rotoscope myself out of the foreground so that I walk in front of this layer, which definitely adds complications, but that's completely fine because that's what we're here for. Before we carry on with this video, I first just want to take a brief moment to talk about the Brooker Films Skillshare courses. And in particular, I would love to talk about the introduction to Adobe After Effects course. So if you're new to Adobe After Effects, or if you just want a refresher on the program, then this course is perfect for you. The link to that course and all of my other courses are in the description below. Now, back to the video. So I'm going to go through to the point where I first interact with this person, which is here. I'm going to make a copy. So Command C, Command V. I'll start the video there. Then I'll go through to the point where I stop interacting. So it's pretty much the entire video. So yeah, it's here. There it is. Then we'll make the cut there, delete that. And this is the part of the video that we need to rotoscope. It's quite a bit, unfortunately, but that's fine. You can see, though, it's only really this bottom part of me at this point that interacts with myself. So just going to go to that first part of the video. We'll go to the roto brush tool. We'll double click that layer. And then you just want to double click the roto brush again to bring up this roto brush layer. Now you just want to go into brushes and increase the size of your brush and then just paint within yourself or paint within the person that you want to keep in the frame. Everything else in the frame that you don't want. So as you can see, this back wall, you want to remove by holding option and then just painting over that part. So once you've completely drawn that outline around the person, you can press play 
and After Effects is just going to scrub forward and just complete that roto for you. Of course, if you stop any imperfections though, then just stop it, go back in time and remove anything or add anything that should or shouldn't be there. And then again, once you've done that, you can just go through frame by frame and you can just make any corrections as they need to be applied. So as you can see, Adobe After Effects is doing a pretty good job of analyzing the scene for me. There is quite a bit of movement in this frame, so I was expecting to have to stop this quite a bit more, but it's doing a decent job. You can see it's chopping off part of my t-shirt down here, but I am fully aware that this part is not interacting with my clone. So that's fine as it is. But there's quite a dramatic jump here, which means there's going to be quite a bit of motion blur. So I'm expecting at this point for it to suddenly go wrong. And there you go. You can see we've lost the arm. So I just need to add this back in. What else have we lost here? If we go frame by frame, there we go. You can see we're losing the arms as we're jumping up. So let's go back and make that correction. Yeah, there you go. We need to go frame by frame to get this all fixed up. So it's lost my hands because there's too much motion blur there. And now I think there shouldn't be too much dramatic movement. So I think we might be in the clear at this point. So as you can see, it's doing a really good job. There's not too much dramatic movement going on here. So the rotor brush has done a brilliant job. And there we go. So once you've done all of that, you just want to go back to the very beginning. And you just want to play this back and just make sure that the roto is perfectly surrounding yourself. And if you feel like this isn't clear enough, then you can select this red box here, which is the toggle alpha overlay. And that's just going to show everything red is going to be removed. Everything not red is going to be kept. So as you can see, I lose part of my shirt here, but that's fine. So that is all great. So I'm going to go back to the main comp and I'm going to drag this layer to the very top to drop it on top of this layer. Now let's play this back and see how this all looks. Brilliant. So what we've done here is we've duplicated this version of me. I've freeze framed this layer and masked around it. Then I've roto brushed around myself in the foreground. And then when I jump into it, it removes that clone. So I think the effect is nearly complete. The only thing that I would add to this effect is just a little bit of fake handheld camera movement because I feel like a little bit of fake handheld movement can really sell an effect like this. So in order to do that, I'm just going to highlight all layers, right click, select pre-compose, and you can rename this if you want, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. Then we'll go into position. So press P. Then I'm going to hold option on the keyboard and select the stopwatch icon. And then we'll type out wiggle open brackets 2 comma 15 and we'll close that down. And that's just going to add a little bit of computer generated handheld camera movement. And that looks great. We are getting these black edges around the frame, though, as you can see at the top here. So I'm just going to go into effects and presets, search for motion tile. We'll drop motion tile onto the pre comp and we'll change the output width and height to 300. And then we'll mirror edges to completely get rid of that black border. Now, let's just render this out. We'll play this back and have a look at this awesome clone jump effect that we've got happening here. And there you go. Thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.